Hey, hey, everybody, Z Garcia here. Today we're taking a look at a sci-fi themed area control card game called Capital Lux 2 Generations. <laughs> As you might correctly suspect, Capital Lux 2 here is the follow-up to Capital Lux. But there's more to it than that. Capital Lux 2 basically contains the entirety of Capital Lux. The rules are slightly tweaked, they've been changed around just a little bit. But one of the many ways you can play this game is with the original powers as presented in Capital Lux, the original game. But now there are alternate powers for some of the characters contained in here. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward card game in which you have a hand of cards, you're going to place some to the center of the table, some in front of you, and you're trying to score the most points. Uh, you're trying to have majorities in some of these areas without tripping a specific threshold, though. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this works. I'll see you on the other side. To set up the game, we're going to place the capital board, this board right here in the center of the table somewhere, and then we are going to assign a power to each of the four colors. Now you can do this randomly by shuffling up all four tiles and then selecting one, or you can pick the one you want among them. I just want to make it clear though that for each of these powers you are going to see in this game, there are three other powers that could have been assigned to that player color. So, uh, many of those are going to come with uh, extra bits and pieces as well. So for example, in this overview there are uh, two bags here I have with tokens that you are not going to see, and there is a stack of cards that you are not going to see, and those are all, again, from the various powers that these boards might be assigned. In this case, because of the powers assigned, we have this deck of cards right here, we have this flag, we have this board at the top, they might not be in play, uh, the, you know, if you picked a different assortment of powers. So, now that we are ready to go, we have two players... Each one has a home base board right here. We give someone the star player token, and we are going to flip over three cards from this shuffle deck and assign them to the uh, capital over here. To play, the game's going to go over three rounds. At the end of those three rounds, we figure out who has the highest score, and they are going to win. And every round begins like this. We give each player six cards from the deck, and then the players are going to draft these cards. You are going to do so by three, four, five, six, there we go. You are going to do so by looking at your hand of cards, keeping two of them, whichever two you want, and then passing the others to uh, the left, and the, players, the player on your right will pass you some cards. You'll take two from those four you've been passed, keep them, and then you'll receive a final two uh, one more time. And so those cards will have been drafted and they compose your hand now. So let's just assume these have been drafted, and this is my hand, and this player's hand is right there. So now we are going to take turns until one player is completely out of cards. At that point, everybody else has one more opportunity to play a card, and then once that's done, everyone who has any cards left in hand has to send them to their home base. We'll come back to that in one second. So it's my turn. I'm going to play a card from my hand. I select whichever one I want. And that card can go to one of two places. I can send it to my home board. If I do that, I simply take the card, I assign it to the matching location, and that's my card play. That's all I do. It'll be the next player's go. The other option I have is I can play a card to the capital up here. And when I do that, I add it to the stack like this. I make sure that the previous cards can be seen, their totals are revealed, and then I am going to take the corresponding power assigned to that color. Now we're going to go through scoring. So scoring works like this. The first thing we need to do is we're going to go through the different colors and see if anybody has more power in their home base than the capital, which is a big no-no. You don't want to be hoarding more power than the capital has or they're going to strike you down. So we check the total here, the total at the uh, in the blue section in that district would be 10 in this case, and we check that each player has at most 10. That player has 6, I have 10, we're okay. We go to the next one, 6 there, that player has 6, none over here, that's okay. And we continue doing that throughout the game. When we get to green, for example, there are 4 here, I have 3, this player has 5. That's too much, so these cards 
are going to be discarded. You remove the entire stack of that color. Once you've checked that total, then we'll go through the colors again and see who will score. Whoever has the highest total, so I've got 10 in blue, my opponent has 6, I am going to control that faction right now and I am going to score the highest card in the district over here. So I'm going to take the highest card, I'm going to put that face down in a score pile somewhere set aside, all right? And then we go to the next one. This player is controlling that. They will put that in their score pile. We go to the next one. I have none in yellow. This player is going to take the highest card and put that in the score pile. And the final over here comes to me. And then we do it again. We are going to leave this alone, leave all this alone. We're going to get six cards each again, draft them two at a time, and go uh, through another round of play. Then do that same check for uh, totals. Make sure you're not over. And then scoring. And then a third time. And that'll be the end of the game. I'll talk about the final scoring in just one sec. In fact, I should probably do that before I tell you what all these powers do. Once we've done this all three times, then you will figure out what your final end game score is. So, what is that? Well, every card you've set aside is going to be a uh, part of your score. And you score the value on those. For any coins you've gathered, you're going to get two points for these. And then everything that's still in your home base, you are going to score the values on those cards as well. The coins, by the way, primarily come to you from tying someone when you are checking who has the most strength at one of these locations. And if you tie, you each get a coin. And then we discard the highest card instead of anyone taking it. All right? So let's go through these powers and let's figure out what's going on over here. When we play at this one, if anybody who plays there is going to draw one of these cards, add that to their hand. These cards are valued between one and six. That's in your hand now. And then you may move the flag. If you move the flag or leave it alone where it was, no matter what, the cards in gray from this stack here, these infiltrators, you can only use these as though they were the color where the flag is. That means I could play it here and trigger this power, or I could play it in my home base, but only to the current color it is. All right? So let's say I did that. Now this power over here, the missionary, you are going to select, uh, when you trigger the missionary, any card that has a lower value than the one you just played there, and you're going to take that into your hand. So if I did that, I played the four there. I'm going to select, uh, I could select, say, this card has a lower value, put that into my hand. And again, that card comes from the capital over here. We go over here to the merchant. When you play there at the merchant, you are going to take a coin as listed there and you are going to put it on your home base play mat over here. And then later on when we are scoring, if you are above something, the limit of something, you are above that, you may choose to spend these coins to raise uh, the threshold for yourself only by one per coin. Meaning if the total uh, as we had an earlier example over here, would look something like this for this player. When we get to green, the, the max, well, let's switch these, actually. So if the max for green is three, and then we would be checking these totals, and we see that this player has four, normally they have to discard that card. You could choose to spend the coin to make your threshold one more per coin. So in this case, I only need one coin, and then I can keep that there. This coin goes back. Any coins you have remaining here at the end of the game will still be worth their two victory points. Lastly, we have this one, the Discoverer. When you play a card there, you are going to move your matching rocket over here. And that is going to move ahead a number of spaces based on the value of this card. If it's a two or lower, a single step, three to four, two steps, five or higher, three steps. So a four is right in the middle, meaning two steps. You take a rocket and you move it one, two times, and wherever you stop, you trigger the ability. These are going to let you draw cards from the deck into your hand. They are going to allow you to trigger abilities on one of the other three colors, or they are going to, if you remain on that spot at the end of the game, give you bonus victory points. For example, if you make it all the way to the end, it's a bonus 12 victory points. So there you go. And also, if you would move, say I would move uh, two with this one. 
and you would end somewhere that's occupied, one, two, you simply go to the next one and take that spot over. Again, I'll remind you, this is only a sampling of the different powers you might have in the game. For example, if instead of the discoverer here in green, you had, say, uh, this one, the converter, then you don't have this board at all. It's simply not in play. Instead, the converter says you reveal three of these cards. They're set aside. And when you trigger that power, so say I play a green card. Let me find one for myself here. Let's just say I had this in hand, okay? When I trigger that power, the converter says I take uh, one card from my hand. I add it to the converter stack over here, set aside. Say that one. And then I take all of one, all of all cards uh, of a one color that's a different color from this one into my hand. So I'll play that. Maybe I'll take this green four. And the next player who plays there, maybe they'll play this one. Maybe they will discard that into the converter and take both blues. Like this. There we go. And so that's a completely different power with completely different uh, outcomes and interactions with everything else that's going on. But anyway, that should give you a sampling of what's going on in the game. The idea of maintaining uh, this central board triggering powers and then being careful what you play in front of you so that you can score them Ideally get bonuses from here, but also keep the stacks alive because they're gonna score at the end of the game You don't want to have a long uh, chain of cards here get wiped out because you went above the requirement uh, In the center of the table. So let's go ahead and go back up top. Let me tell you what I think of it Capital Lux, the original one, is a, is a neat game. I rated that a 7 out of 10, and I, I liked it. I thought it was uh, interesting. It was sort of a tricky game a little bit, sort of from a, from a strategic point of view. And it took eh, maybe a play and a half to sort of wrap your head around. Okay, I see how these manipulations and these combinations of powers make for some trickery and some, some, some clever card play. Now, a game and a half is really not that long. The game is fairly short, okay? But it, it grew as you play it. And then eventually you sort of figured it out or maybe grew accustomed to it or grew tired of it and moved on. I certainly did. Capital Lux 2 here, again, reworked some of the rules, but there's so much more content in here that I think is going to be a lot harder for folks to just become... for, for this content to become monotonous to, to a lot of folks. So... Let's dive into it. Okay, let me tell you what I think. I'm going to start right at the top with really the only negative I have, which is the theme. The theme here is a bunch of nonsense. Uh, I mean, they don't really try even in the rule book in the uh, at the beginning here of the rule book where they tell you what the uh, the setting of the world is. They barely mention what the setting of the world is. What you are supposed to do. You're sending people to the capital, and you I guess have to keep people home too it, it, they don't they don't go into it a lot here's the funny thing and the reason it's not getting a negative from me you can actually use this theme to teach and it helps teach the game this idea of you do need to send people out to the capital when you do that they are you are gaining some benefit but you have to keep your folks at home too you don't want to upset the capital though don't go above them and then when you are strong someone from the capital comes to you and they now work in your city whatever you however you want to phrase it but you can wrap around the mechanisms in, in this thematic invention mostly of your own really that will help you teach the game so there you go the aesthetics are great excellent card quality i like the iconography myself i think it's very clean a couple of minor things the cardboard with all of its sharp edges and everything, is starting to show somewhere. And then the player board and the, the central board are very thin. They're just basically thick paper, okay? They don't move around a lot. None of them are bent. I haven't had any issues with them, but they're, but they're fairly thin. Still, overall, great card quality. And that's the main thing, that deck of cards. The card quality of those is some of the best linen finish card quality I have seen in a while. Replay value. Great. Like I said, you can play with all of the A powers. They're lettered. A, B, C, D. If you play with the A power for each of the four colors, you are basically playing Capital Lux with, again, a couple of little tweaks. But you can mix that up. So there's so much replayability. That's excellent. The game arc. 
This game is a wonderful example of quick meets thinky. The game is short. It lists over here 15 to 40 minutes. I would say that's right. You can have games that are that short. But there is a lot to consider. And there are a lot of things to, to puzzle your way through. The draft, certainly the first time you do it, you might not be thinking too far ahead. But I guarantee you by the third round, that draft will be thinking. Every card you play is very important. Where you play it, when is very important. That's the other thing you'll come to discover. I have a card here. I'm pretty sure I'm going to play just into my own uh, home base here. But when do I tip my hand? When do I do it? So that's that's very engaging and clever. Um, I guess I'm talking about tactics and luck and strategy now. But anyway, uh, so the game arc is good stuff. Ease of play, smooth, easy to understand. And the powers, though some of them are tricky, are well explained. They include in here the rule book, but also then you have this appendix with all of the uh, power tiles. Okay, so they explain all of the different powers there, and they explain all of the different powers in there. So that's nice that you can just reference this if you already know how to play and just look up. Okay, how does the outsider work? What is that about? Well... They're going to give you a good breakdown of what that means. Lastly, tactics, luck, strategy, like I said, it's it's solid. There's some luck, certainly, okay? You will sometimes, because of the powers, draw a card from the deck or have something moved around on you, what have you. But generally speaking, this is a game about reacting, watching what's going on, being mindful. Now, on that note... I like it best at two because I just have to watch one person and what they're doing. If you play with four, you have to keep track of a lot of things that folks are doing. This is an area control game, area majority. So there's that sort of idea of, okay, well, I'm beating them, but I got to check three people every time I, anything changes. So that could be a little bit tiring. But again, the game is short, so it's that thinky meets quick and clever. Overall... I think this is a lovely improvement on the original Capital Lux. I rated that a 7, like I said. This gets a whole point higher. This gets an 8. Good box, good quality, thinky filler. Uh, the theme, I don't know what's going on with that, but again, it's going to be so short. I don't think you're going to have a lot of time to get invested into whatever that's about. So I do recommend this one. If you enjoy those kinds of games, you know, card games that have plenty going on that are going to hook you that first time you play and keep you going hmm huh. okay let's let's do that again this is a good one for that you know one that you're going to play twice in a row just to change some up and uh and see what happens now so there it is eight out of ten that is a seal of approval i dig it i recommend you check this one out capital lux 2 folks my name is z garcia i'll see you on the next one